coming. Bah, Aslan! Don't tell me you people believe in those ridiculous tales. Oh, he's coming. Just you wait. He doesn't appreciate being doubted. Oh, yes, because there's some giant feline out there just waiting for us to... Ah, God! No! Ah! I thought Aslan was a lion. We only had a tiger. Oh, God, I'm so sorry! Stop eating my face! One of my favorite book series growing up was The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. Now, the first book in the series was never my favorite. That was The Silver Chair, the best one, but it also wasn't the worst. No, that was The Last Battle. And yes, I've reread it as an adult. And no, it's not saying nearly as much as you all keep trying to tell me it does. He had a subpar book that was assigned more value than it's actually worth because of the combination of being in the series it was and having very blatant references to revelations in it. I quite enjoyed the 2005 movie version of The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe as well. It had nothing on the old BBC version from 1988, but it was still quite good. That's fortunate for me because this game retells the movie point for point. It's actually quite a bit of fun to play through the scenes from the movie even if it causes a few weird moments. Let's not waste any more time, though, and dive right into the game. Everything opens with... FMV from the movie. This is interesting. Most of the in-game cutscenes are actually the official movie. This causes some odd moments, such as every time the game swaps from movie cutscene to in-game cutscene. The transitions are well done, but to go from obviously real movie footage to... 2005-era game footage, it looks good for a game, it doesn't look good alongside real actors. So we're running around the house gathering the other children and escaping the bomb shelter with our family. Now, I didn't realize this when I saw the movie, but the Pevensey children are dead. They left their house lights on during the World War II bombing runs. Furthermore, their bomb shelter has lights on inside of it. Blackout curtains were important for a reason. And that was so the bomb planes couldn't see your house. There were so many planes flying overhead in both the scene and the movie, looking for any bit of light to bomb. And you have presented them with a magnificent point of light to absolutely destroy. And your shelter looks like it's going to get wiped out in a single blast. So all the rest of Narnia is a dream before the life leaves your body, right? Each of the four children is able to do something different. Edmund can climb things, Lucy goes through small gaps in caves, Susan can use distance weapons, and Peter can push things and use a sword. But Susan can also push things. And Edmund can also use a sword, so Peter's about as much of a figurehead in the game as he was in the books. If you know the book, there will be a few deviations that the movie created, such as sliding down a river on ice to escape the White Witch's wolves. Several set pieces also only exist for the purposes of it being a game, such as the boss fights against the various ogres, or holding your ground as the beavers chew through the thicket to make an escape path. Everything still feels very much in the spirit of the books, though. Even little details will remind those who loved the books of the spirit and charm, such as the level select being the wardrobe itself. Yet each of the pieces of panel art on the front of the wardrobe is a different level. That is so creative and interesting. I want to say the same thing for the rest of the game because it definitely had effort put into it. I got partway through and thought I was going to call the game out for having very similar mechanics to the original LEGO Star Wars but apparently they came out within several months of each other, so it couldn't be accused of just copying something new. And the game isn't afraid to try new things that could fail. There are three types of collectibles in the game. The most common are the coins, which will let you buy upgrades for the children. Then there are hidden shields and statues for you to find. I stop paying attention to either of them because I'm so used to games throwing in secrets for players to find for 100% completion without making it worth the effort in the slightest. To my complete shock, in the last level of the game, the statues come back into play. It's the final fight with wave after wave of increasingly difficult enemies to defeat. But before the fight started, you were presented with a shop menu. Every statue you had unlocked was now a currency to buy things, 
like a centaur charge or griffins dropping boulders to make your grand battle a bit easier. The collectibles had come around to have a real impact on gameplay, and I felt so bad for not having collected more. With that said, I never ended up using what I bought for the most part, though. I didn't understand how they were activated, so I accidentally used my most powerful and expensive one-time attack to kill a few basic enemies. I used one properly later, but you just hold off using the others. You don't know when it's going to end, and with things getting harder and harder and harder, I was afraid to use those big attacks because something bigger would be right around the corner, and if I couldn't handle this, how would I handle that? And then suddenly, and without warning, the level was over. I still had two big attacks out of my four I'd never used. A little counter somewhere that says, you are on wave X out of Z is all I would have needed to know how to judge when to use my big abilities that I bought. Despite good design and charm, there was one huge thing holding the game back, however. It has clearly been designed with co-op in mind. Enemies won't stop spawning, but you have to shoot specific progress points to progress. You'll need to accomplish two actions at once, such as fending off the creepy golem ripoffs while also shooting the wolves with the bow, or else you lose. But with only one person, you can't get a shot off because you'll be attacked incessantly. In some levels, trying to get the collectibles with only one player is downright impossible, as a boss and his constantly spawning minions around you are just beating you down without pause. In the final battle with the White Witch, I couldn't finish the battle for the life of me. She's constantly spawning very tough enemies that I have to fight off and I need to wait for her to fall back while she's insta-killing my other characters. Swap to Lucy once she falls back to heal. Swap to Susan once she's alive and shoot the witch. Then, as she starts to move, go to a burning bundle of wood and throw it at her. Which, by the way, these things are impossible to aim. The children do not want to move them in any reasonable manner at the best of times, and even then, where they'll go once you hit them is all up to the whims of fate. But once you finally get the bundle to hit her, you then have to swap to Peter, get in, and hit her five times. She'll fall back for a moment, and you have to swap back to Susan and play a melody on your horn. That melody is played by hitting about eight notes in sequence, and if one of the minotaurs that's running around and trying to kill you hits you, then you're knocked out of it. Take more than a couple seconds, and the witch breaks free, and you have to start all over again. There is no time to fight off the minions, but without fighting off the minions, you lose. Almost every boss fight is like this and left me tearing my hair out in frustration at best, practically screaming in anger at worst. If you can find a second person to play with who also loves the Narnia series, then by all means, pick this game up. It would have been a creative joy for me to play through if I just had someone to work with me on these puzzles in areas that had clearly been designed with two people in mind. But as a solo experience, stay as far away from this thing as possible. The frustration will sour what would have otherwise been an excellently enjoyable game. The only thing I will say is don't expect the themes from the movie and the book to carry over. Lucy being right, belief, and trust, and even Aslan himself are really underplayed. And when they finally play the big scene, and if you've read the book or seen the movie, you know which one I mean, you barely feel any impact because of how little focus was placed on Aslan. Some might say this makes the game a poor representation of the spirit of the books, but I disagree. It lets you experience the excitement and adventure that the children went through, something I always felt was honestly lacking in the book. There, when Peter kills Maugrim, it kind of feels underwhelming. Here, it's the culmination of a boss fight that gives it a feeling of intensity. So yes, some aspects are underplayed, but it brings forward an aspect that was underplayed before. That's why things like this have multiple versions. So, if you love Narnia and have a family member or a friend who does too, pick this game up. If you want some well-made co-op from the same era as the LEGO Star Wars, but with a bit less cartoony playstyle, this would still be a strong game to check out. But again, if you're on your own, I don't care how much Aslan means to you, don't pick this game up.